everyone, today I want to show you how to create dramatic watercolour leaves or greenery and I'm all for something that's a little bit unusual and find it quite interesting in terms of jazzing up the leaves a little bit. So what I've done here instead of drawing my own, very easy and very simple, I used the um, leaf part, so this is the two stems the single one and the double one right here to create these clusters of foliage. You can stamp them uh, to come out longer or to come out straight from underneath the flower. We're not going to watercolor the flowers today because it's going to be um, purely the, um, the leaf parts. So if you're interested, these are from my Florals Clear Stamp Set, which are going to be back in stock end of February. So hopefully you can grab a pack this time if you missed out on the first. Okay, so what I want to do today is based on a little um, swatch we did together, I have created these two interesting mixes which really are right up my alley. I love this type of a look. So today I want to play around with naphthamide maroon so this is the main color that we used here and then the two greens are from my palette from this palette um again i'll leave two cards here one after the other first one will be how I was um creating this palette so you can see the process and second will be the complete palette so i run you th run uh, you through the thought process of um the colors that i picked and why for this palette and then also the final colors what they are so I don't repeat myself what's on what's in here okay so the two greens however today that we're looking at are Daniel Smith spring green which is this baby here and then next to it is leaf green which is more of a yellowy green and it's by Mijello Mission Gold which is very very pretty now those two colors seems to have some sort of white bit of a base to it so hence why it was a bit surprising to get those interesting results. So today I will try doing what I did there, but on these leaves and see how we get on. So um, all the links, by the way, will be down below for you to find any of the products that you like seeing in today's video. I'm just going to get a few things ready here. So let's push it all the way here and then the green like that. So I squeezed a little bit of the naphthamine maroon into my palette right here. So the thing that looked really interesting was when actually not mixing those colors together at all but letting them mix on the paper. So what you need to do for that is mix up a very intense naphthamide maroon mix. So it needs to be quite creamy. And what we're going to do is we're going to leave it alone in the palette. Actually, I'll need a little bit more. I'm already going through quite a bit of it because I love it so much. It's uh, my favorite color at the moment. Okay, so I'm just going to add a bit of water in there. Right, so I'm going to start with spring green and trying not to have too much water. So I'm trying to control it a little bit on my napkin right there. And what we're going to do is, let's start with this one. So I'm just going to add some of it right onto the tip, into the tip of the leaf and then dry the brush out. In fact, I think I should use a different brush because this one is not great for smaller illustrations. So I'm going to switch to my silver black velvet in round four. The water control is a lot greater in here as well as the sizing of it. Okay, so nice and creamy, you can see that. We're going to now touch this into the other corner and I'm going to leave a 
some of the highlights. Now, the trick here is the water control wasn't great. So I'm going to, in the first, um, with the first brush, so I'm going to try and lift it now. And that's now much better. So hopefully it will still mix nicely. So I'm going to go back into Naphtamide Maroon and just refresh it and kind of help it a little bit here at the bottom and see what happens. So these leaves would be great for winter time when you're doing some illustrations because the color palette is quite dark. Okay, so this time I'm going to go into into the leaf green. Now, the key here is to get the water and the pigment ratio perfectly right so that it's not sitting there as a puddle and the naphthamide maroon can move in comfortably at the same time we don't want it to overtake too much so in this this time i'm going to try moving the green up to the most part of the leaf and with relatively dry brush i'm going to pick up the mix of the color here and then hopefully that will give us, that's it. So that's what I'm looking for. And then I'm going to just let it mix on paper. So these are quite dramatic and quite unusual, but something that I really, really like. And I think that they come out best um, in maybe bigger space like if you have a bigger space to work on, but um, doing it like that on the paper, to me, looks the best. So again, going back into this green, this time I'm going to try and also move the color further up onto the leaf and just leave a tiny little bit of space for the naphthamide maroon, keeping in mind that it is a very um, dominant color. So it takes over regardless of how little you use it. So let's see now. I can see that there is a little bit too much water, so I'm just going to dry up my brush and lift the water from certain areas. The other thing you can do is also, while it's still drying, just dab a little bit of water and that will create these sort of blossoming effects. Okay, back onto Naphthamide Maroon, mixing up the nice creamy texture of it. And at this point, again, just touching it ever so slightly. Yeah, so that looks now much more interesting than the first one. So get your water control uh, under control and you will find it more fun. Uh, this time I'm actually going to move up a little bit and try the green gold, which is right next to... Um, the leaf green on my palette. So I haven't tried this color in the last mix. That's why I don't know what's gonna happen, but let's try it together anyway. So hardly need any color here. And again, just moving it up there and back into the dark mix and again just touching it ever so slightly so if you don't have enough water also you'll find that the color is not going much so in that case sometimes you need to help it a little so that looks quite pretty and then Let's do a couple more like that actually. So again, let's 
starting with the tip, pulling the color all the way up. So this one takes a bit of practice to get it right in terms of not too wet, not too dry. While this one is drying here, I'm going to dab a little bit of water and here as well. Back into this Naptamide Maroon mix. And then just move it out a little. If you don't let Naphtamide Maroon take over completely, it actually looks really pretty as long as you get that ratio correct. So we're starting to get there now. <laughs> okay, I want to try the spring green, which is not easy on such a small leaf. So again, I'm going to make a wet enough mix here. but not too bad. So leaving some of the highlights here. And now into Naphtamide Maroon. Okay, there we go. And then I'll try the sub green. I haven't tried the sub green yet. Going through all of the colors here, all the greens in my palette. But you get the idea what you need to do here, basically. So if something puddles up like this, you need to kind of get the moisture out of it. Use your brush as a little sponge. Guide it nicely. Sometimes watercolors need a bit of babysitting <laughs> and um, a little bit of guidance. So then we're going to take Naphtamide Maroon and make sure it travels at least a little bit. Now actually Naphtamide Maroon with Sub Green, that's a beautiful combo. I like this a lot. So... I'll remind you again what I'm trying to create here is this. Now, because this is a bigger space, it was a lot easier to create that. Here, because the leaves are so small, it's a big struggle. But with the other uh, one, which is the Leaf Green by Magello, Mission Gold, and also the neighboring colors, which is Green Gold and Sub Green, both by Daniel Smith, that seems um, a lot easier to achieve. So I'm just going to continue with the colors that do work and um, I'm going to move up one darker which is the Paraline Green on my palette and that color kind of created a bit of black in our last swatch play. So need to be quite careful. I'm going to lift the sub green here from the bottom as it is too dark over there and then we're going to go back into Naphtamide Maroon and let it trickle down the leaf which looks really pretty. Okay, so let me try with the darker color yet. The Paraline Green will be the last green. So all these four we are trying. So on its own it almost looks black. So you do need to be very light-handed with it. And kind of remove some of it to make it appear more green. It's like a grayish green. And then again, nice wet mix of this. Oh, that looks beautiful. Okay, so that looks good, but it's even more dramatic. So it depends how green you like it. So this is really interesting to use two colors um, to do that with. So you could do a bit of a glaze, but I'm trying to get everything looking nice uh, to begin with so that I don't need to glaze later on. 
So I'm just going to go and do two leaves at the same time because I have enough pigment here and I don't want to wash it out. So again, sub green and now clean brush and just move it up a little bit up to the petal like that. Do a bit of lifting like that. I hope you're enjoying more of the watercolour tutorials that I have been doing. I am certainly enjoying making them and playing around with the watercolour. I did miss it myself, to be frank. Um, so hopefully we can do more of these type of tutorials. Okay, so there we go. So that looks nice. Help it a little if it's just not going any further. And again, remember if you want some of these watercolor effects, just dab it a little bit of water on top to create that. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is go into that uh, yellow, or not yellow, the leaf green and add a little bit lighter color onto here. And a little bit more. You can also mix the greens, like you can add a bit of sub green into this color. That also creates a bit of a nice look. And then whatever is too puddly and too wet, you just can help yourself with that. And again, Naphtamide Maroon right into here and just w watch it move in there. Okay, so you get the idea and quite different and quite fun, I'd say. So the other thing I like to do with Naphtamide Maroon is actually glaze it to get the darkest value of it in some of the areas. So like here and it just to me looks really, really beautiful when it's at its darkest. So that's totally optional. You can leave it as it is. A bit of glaze looks very nice on its own when it's completely dry because the color is not going to shift from this point much. Uh, but if the paper is still a little bit damp, it will move further down again like it's done here. If you find that the color sits a little bit too obvious, then just use tip of your brush and blend it in a little. And then I will go back in again, final third time. And at that point it really should stay put and not move much because the paper had a bit more extra time to dry out. And that's what we're doing here. So that's it. I'll bring you in a little bit closer to have a look at these dramatic green leaves. And hopefully it's something you want to try in your art journal with your floral illustrations. So there we go. So here's a little close up. And my favorite combo is with these I think so the sub green green gold and leaf green and even this one which was with the pearling green that's also looks quite nice but sort of becomes a little bit dark so I hope you enjoyed it and you're going to try it with your greenery and thanks for watching see you soon